Yeah, so Gobi is a um, reusable water bottle. It's got a filter in top. We have a, a couple patents that protect not only our IP, but also the way that we utilize the bottle um, to create the most user-friendly product. And why we came up with this bottle, in fact, when Rusty designed it, you know, Hurricane Katrina had just come through, and the disaster that happened from the hurricane was one thing, but the disaster that happened from the disaster relief was another thing. And what happened there was there wasn't an infrastructure to clean up the single-use products that they were distributing. So all of these water bottles that they transported there, one, water's heavy, right? Two, now you have the streets littered with plastic and there was no way to clean it up. And this just contributed to the problem of the aftermath. And so when he was looking at, you know, what was out there as a, um, you know, substitute, Single use, you know, reusable water bottles were one thing, but when you'd fill it up at your home, in the fridge, from a filtered source, or from your office, but when you go out for the day, where do you fill it up? And people just don't want to fill it up at their gym sink. It doesn't taste good, right? They don't fill it up at the gas station sink. They don't fill it up at a multitude of places. So they end up either buying bottled water or waiting till they get home so they can fill up again. And neither of those options were a real solution. And, you know, bottled water exists today because people don't like the way their tap water tastes. 20 years ago when Perrier you know, hit the market, I remember my dad telling me, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna buy bottled water. What are you gonna do, sell me air next? <laughs> Today it's the number one selling beverage in the world. Wow. Over tea, over coffee, over all alcoholic beverages, even over soda. So it is, wow. it is here, right? And the ridiculousness of single use water bottles is just mind blowing to me. 60% of all bottled water is filtered tap water, right? That means, they're filtering what's coming out of your tap and they're giving it back to you, right? Yeah. If you look at a bottle of Coca-Cola on the shelf, right next to its partner, Dasani, which is Coca-Cola, right? Dasani water, Coca-Cola. Dasani has nothing in it. Coca-Cola has you know, sugar and ingredients and colorant. They charge you more to do nothing to the water mm -hmm. than they do to do all this stuff to or, the water. Yeah, I remember on Penn & Teller's Bullshit, they had an episode where uh, they had people taste test like the Pepsi and Coke challenge and everyone actually chose the tap water right. for the large majority. Right, yeah, they actually, they took hose water, yep. right? And then they were selling Everest Pure, $8 a bottle, filtered at the top of the world with the lowest amount of gravity <laughs> and people were like, oh, you can really <laughs> taste it. <laughs> yeah, and it was all of the waters they were tasting tap water. Yeah. were hose water. Not even tie, it was out of the hose, out of the yeah. rubber hose. So it, it's all perception. And we knew that we couldn't just come in and try and say, this doesn't work, right? That wouldn't, that, that just won't fly. And the bottled water industry has done a great job of kind of demonizing tap water, right? They make it look bad, they make it seem bad. And, you know, ultimately it does taste bad because we chlorinate our water. It has heavy minerals and sometimes metals depending on how old your pipes are. So we said, how can we provide a solution that will steer people away from that? And as we started developing that, the idea was we have to provide a solution that is simpler than buying bottled water. Because to the common person out there buying, the common consumer, when you look at bottled water, you say, well, it's so convenient. It's everywhere. I don't have to remember it. It's at the gym. It's at the gas station. It's at the airport, right? I don't have to think about it. I just go and if I need to buy it, I buy it. Problem is, when you think about it, it's not really convenient. You have to stop your day, you have to go wait in line, buy it, you get one use out of it, then you gotta feel bad about where you're gonna throw it out, right? Because you got everyone preaching, you gotta recycle it, and now you gotta go buy more, and how many are you gonna carry on you? It's a cost saver, it's a time saver, plus you don't have to go to Costco and buy the bulk water to try and save it, and when you give it to your kids, how many are they gonna carry on them for the day? Right, and so when we looked at Gobi, we said, how can we make a product that is the most user friendly, the most convenient filtered water bottle we can do? And so that's where we really dove into the design factor of it, and that's what separates us from the crowd because we knew this would be the evolution it's a of the product. Pretty sexy water bottle, as Damon John said, yeah. right on Shark Tank. <laughs> he said, "This is a sexy water bottle," but. Um, you know, you have Camelback and you have Brita and you have Core and you have these large companies that how are we going to compete off a startup, an actual true startup, you know? And so we really looked at how to protect ourselves and how to create this environment that would be the most user friendly and conducive to consumption product. And so that's why we've eliminated the straw. That's why we have the squeezable portion that forces the water through. You know, there's no more cleaning. There's no more having, you can share it with your kid. You don't, when you're laying in bed, you know, if you have a straw in there, you'd have to sit up mm -hmm. in bed to drink from it. You couldn't just drink Hope naturally. And, and so all those little things add up, you know, even just, 
you yeah. know even just having a wide mouth opening like this you know so it's like a glass in your cupboard it means you can clean it by hand which is really easy you can also add ice and you can do things like that that just to the user experience because if you have something that's kind of a little bit tricky to use it ends up in your cupboard right i always say it ends up in your cupboard with the rest of your good ideas <laughs> and so it's it's been a pleasure to see you know that this bottle has been welcomed with the reception it has and you know in all honesty from a business perspective we're not selling water bottles we're selling filters right it's a replacement razor strategy it's a printer cartridge strategy right so if we're selling the filters how can we do that well they got to use the bottle and you know today we've sold more filters than we have bottles we've sold about 28,000 filters and you do the math if each filter saves the equivalent to 1067 water bottles how many water bottles have we saved from entering the environment? How much money have we saved the American consumer and how much time, right? I'm gonna ask you to do the math, sorry, I'm not gonna do the math. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what, what are uh, your team's biggest goals then? I mean, where do you wanna see these water bottles most? Absolutely, well, in everybody's hands. Who doesn't drink go. water, right? I mean, it's, it's amazing. When we started out, we really pigeonholed ourselves and we thought our ideal consumer is the, what we call the eco-chic. Right? Mm -hmm. They go to yoga, they have their Tom shoes, they have their mat, they like to show everybody that they've got it, right? They walk everywhere, they don't drive. And we thought that was it because it's an expensive water bottle. It's a $30 water bottle. And that's what we kind of aimed for. And we shot ourselves in the foot because we realized well, we completely undercut the market that valued this product. Our number one customer to date is college students, right? And we never thought a broke college kid who's eating right. Top Ramen would spend 30 bucks on a water bottle. But they just get it. They, there's no convincing them. They understand. Yeah. They well, they Very just get simple. it. There's no the environmental. You don't need to talk to them about it. They get it. They get that they're saving. But they also get they have a financial freedom because they don't have to buy bottled water anymore. It's a one stop shop. They sold water at my school for four dollars. Right. For one. Water. Think about yep. that. Think about it. you go to the airport with this. You dump on one side and you fill up on the other. I go to the ball game instead of buying a four dollar bottle of water. I dump on one side. I fill up on the other. And you know when we hit the college students and then we hit you know our next consumer is moms and we didn't expect that either it's because they get to carry one thing and they can share it because you have you know the ability to squeeze the water out <laughs> so because of that factor they can share it with their kids yeah, you can't do that with a straw you'd have to suck it in your mouth and spit it out right yeah. so moms love it because it's bpa free it's the dishwasher safe. it's just convenient factor for the moms and through that process what we noticed is it wasn't the environmental impact that people really cared about. And it wasn't really, and that's what we thought for sure. We knew it was gonna be the environmental impact and it wasn't the cost savings. The number one response that we get from every one of our customers is, I just drink more water now. I just drink more water. Yeah. And to us, that's like, we never thought about it, but it's a home run. Yeah. We didn't plan for it, but it was a home run because that's hydration. That means they're coming back to buy more filters. That means they're happier, they're more efficient. It's a win-win, you know, and, and that's what's really created brand ambassadors from everybody. We don't spend money on marketing. We don't do it. And it's crazy how far we've gone and how much exposure we've gone without it. Now, granted, Shark Tank helped, but you know, so I was just gonna yeah. ask you. <laughs> you know, what we did, we had to get creative and having no money really helps the creativity, mm -hmm. right? When you're bootstrapped, you really have to reach for the stars. And so what I started doing, what I started seeing is every time we got exposure, incredible, incredible response. But how do we get that exposure? Not everything is Shark Tank. Right. And so what I started doing is enrolling in competitions and, you know, winning the FedEx, you know, small business grant, national competition, huge for us. They filmed a $100,000 video that they put online. It's great stuff. I mean, it's incredible, right? They've just flew us around the country as like their mm -hmm. spokespeople. They've really embraced us. Um, Dream Big America competition, right? All, th there's a, a list now. I, I think we've won about six competitions in the last year from cool companies to Lean, Mean and Green Startup to, you know, we just won the Suncatcher Award from Earthworks. So it's, that keeps us in the spotlight. And because of that, we've now realized, you know, we have the muscle and the juice to get us to a certain point. And for some people, they want to ride that wave all the way out and learn it all but we realized we were missing a part and we really needed um, um, investment. And so when we started to go out and look for investment, it was to you know, scale our company beyond where we were to really grow it to the next level. And um, from you know, thousands of bottles to millions of bottles, right? So how do we do that? And so we, we needed money. And with the money, you then have to learn how to grow that infrastructure 
And so at that same time, we were approached by a company who said, we know what you're missing. We love what you're doing. We think you are the next big, big thing. We want to take you guys there. And so we just successfully licensed the company out, which is great. great. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And uh, it's been a long process and it was extremely rewarding for all of the you know sacrifice that you do. Working two jobs and staying up till mm-hmm. way past when you should and getting yelled at by your wife for keeping the computer on in bed. <laughs> and so it's it's been incredible. And to work with these guys, they, they basically turned Gobi into a design house because they're going to be taking over manufacturing and customer service and everything and we just have to come up with new product development and IP and that's what we do you know so it's, it's been so where are the creativity levels now that you're funded <laughs> what's that are the creativity levels still high though yeah, well now it like think it. about what our responsibility is it's yeah. just creativity hmm. right and we only get paid for that through our royalty rate so we have to make sure that that streamline keeps coming in but it's also freed up a lot of time for me right and so now I've been able to actually explore other things than just Gobi. And it's a little hard. Like the feeling. Gobi's your baby. It's my baby. <laughs> and my baby just went to college. And I just oh. packed up the room and I sent him off and her or her off. And, and it's hard because letting go of the grips on some of the things is really hard to do. But you know it's what's best. It's best. And the, the whole goal for me when I came into Gobi was I want to make a difference. And I want to make a difference in something that is drastically skewed right now. I mean, if bottled water is two th- on average is 2,000 times the price of tap. Princeton just put out a study last year that showed if you were to drink your daily recommended dose of water, where you drink eight glasses of water a day for a year, if you drink that in bottled water, it'd be close to $1,500 a year oh, in bottled gosh. water. The inverse, if you were to drink that out of your tap, 1,500 from bottled water, guess what it is out of your tap? 17 cents a dollar 49 a dollar 49 it's a fraction of a penny per it's gallon actually less than one bottle of water it's crazy right yeah. and, and and if you think about it bottled water costs more than gasoline per gallon hmm. you never even think about it that never. way but we complain about gasoline but we never complain about bottled water we just do it it's become a part of our consumption and so this gives us that tool and that opportunity so you're the elon musk of water <laughs> we're gonna be and is. and we just uh had some great talks with some other um, um groups that are designing some technologies that we can put into our bottle that will literally separate us from everybody huh. and uh you know part of what we did with the patent is knowing that everybody else has to use a straw and how inconvenient a straw is you got to yeah. clean them and all, all that nonsense we, we didn't just patent the ability to squeeze the hard shell bottle, but we trademarked the patent as FlexFlow. So eventually, once the brand recognition is there, we'll license that out, just like Gore-Tex does, right? So every water bottle will want to have the FlexFlow on their water bottle. Mm-hmm. So right now, you guys are focusing on a new project with your Indiegogo campaign. Yeah. Can you give us some details on that? Yeah, I can. So um, it's taken us this long to get here, and I'm, it's probably what I'm most proud of. We are about to launch a new filter that will be able to, you know, you have your daily use filter, which takes out chlorine and odors and metal out of your tap water. But that limits you to daily use. This is going to the gym, on your nightstand, right? At your work, on your desk. The new filter... It's going to shock some people. Yeah. Is a military-grade biofilter. This Hmm. filter you can take camping and backpacking. You can take it to Cambodia and drink stagnant water. You know, you can keep this one filter in your garage instead of... 50 gallons of water in case of an emergency. You remember the San Diego blackout? Yes. Well, they told us we don't. our, our water comes from reclamation plants. We don't know if the generators have kicked on, so don't drink your water just in case. Now you don't have to worry about it. You have water wherever you go at any time. And all you do is screw out one and you screw in the other. You don't have to buy a different bottle. You don't have to have a special pump. It's all in one shop, a one-stop shop. And the next good thing is for every thousand of those filters that we build, we're building a well in Sierra Leone that will serve a thousand people. And that's where my heart has always been, is what's the bigger scope? What's the broader sense of what you're doing? And with that, you know, at first we thought, oh, for every filter, we'll give a filter, right? For every filter, we'll give a filter. The Tom's model. Problem is, like a Tom's model, which I love because they opened up this door, right? Shoes run out, filters run out. 
what do you do next? Kids who had calluses their whole life are now wearing shoes, their shoe runs out or it gets stolen from them. Back to where they started. Except now they don't have the calluses. So they're getting injuries on their feet and they don't have the medication to solve that. So the filters, how would we replace it? You know, those kind of things. So instead we said wells are water for life, right? So we did the, you know, third party cost analysis and it's about $20 a person. $20 a person, 20, it's actually about 21. But that will give water to somebody for life. And that's not just building a well, mm. because that would be very naive to say, we can just build a well. It's very Western to say, I'll build a well, drop it there, and it'll solve water the problem, right? <laughs> because what happens with they're drinking clean water, but they're washing their hands in contaminated water and eating with it. Mm -hmm. So there has to be education, right? So it's a well, it's an education platform, and it's teaching the people how to not only use the well, but how to repair the well, right? So in case it breaks down, they're not relying on outside help they are self-sustaining and so that's why we are specific to Sierra Leone and 1 billion thirsty because what they do is I say you know, Sierra Leone is regarded heavily as one of the poorest countries in the world it's got the highest infant mortality the average life expectancy is 57 years old I mean it goes on and on it's crazy and three-quarters of the population live below the poverty line all right so their number one problem is clean water. And we don't think about this, why it's so important. Because without access to clean water, your economy can't grow. You have to spend all day going to get water, right? So the kids aren't in school, they're fetching water, so you're not growing there. The farmers can't water their crops, right? The whole economy is based off of water. And so with Sierra Leone, we said, let's target our efforts there. We'll learn the culture, we'll learn what they're doing, and this is what One Billion Thirsty's already been doing. And we can go in and we can make a huge difference there. Not only can we make a huge difference, once we learn how to do it there, well, then we'll go to the next place. We're not gonna say we're gonna cure the world's problem, right? right? You can't grasp that. Let's focus, and that's what Let's Gobi, make a and talk about a marriage, that's what Gobi does, because I, we feel, what does it matter if I drink bottled water? Millions of people are doing it, right? But when I say, well, your one filter is the equivalent to 1,067 water bottles, people get it, and they go, oh, it's tangible now, right? Mm -hmm. And so that becomes what's moving. And, and that's why that marriage is so important to us. And this new filter campaign is just gonna be unbelievable. So when is that gonna be started? Well, we're doing a little bit of this mysterious kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna be launching it, you can expect, probably near the end of August or early September. Right. But we're not gonna tell anybody. And, uh, How's everyone gonna find out about it? So the way you have to find out is you have to go to our website, wwwgobih 2 which is G-O-B-I-E-H2O is an oxygen, dot com. So it's gobih 2 ocom and sign up. There's, that's all we're doing. We're not selling product right now because we want this to be about our mission. We want people to understand what we're doing. So all there is is a little place for an email. We're not gonna spam you. You won't get any emails from us except for one email right before we start and we're gonna say we're launching now and for the first 200 supporters that we get they're gonna get a deal that, they, that is just incredible we're gonna be giving like a free lifetime filter we're gonna be giving the everyday oh, yeah. use filters bottle and it'll be for a package of like sixty dollars genius I mean it's it's gonna be great but you gotta be you gotta be hot on the trail and that's why we're gonna wait and kind of launch it yeah, and then we have a couple things along the way that we're going to be doing as well and we've got a lot of people collaborating on it so i'm really so excited everyone needs to go out and get on the email list and other than that can you tell us how we can keep up with gobi on social media yeah so you can follow us on facebook you know it's just forward slash gobi h2o um, we're on twitter we're on uh um, pinstress we're on everything we're on linkedin we're everywhere um and uh we love the support and our biggest thing for social media is take pictures with your bottles Take pictures without your bottles. Just send us pictures. We love people's pictures. We're getting these advocates that are going around the world with their bottles and taking pictures with them. It's just it's one of my favorite things. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys.